Hello and welcome to Obsessive Audio. Hope everybody's having a great week. Eric here. And you know, I'm always saying we've got a special treat for you and such and such. And I do, as you know on the channel here, uh, the things that I put on here I really like. If I don't like it, it doesn't tend to make it on. But every now and then, a plugin comes along that frankly blows me away. And today we have the Howie Weinberg Mastering Console from Acoustic Audio. <laughs> Take a look at this thing. This has the entire Howie Weinberg process in one plugin. Now we're going to take a virtual journey to LA, more specifically Laurel Canyon, where resides the mastering facility of a certain Howie Weinberg. Anyone in music knows who Howie Weinberg is. He's got thousands upon thousands of credits in his name, including more than 200 gold and platinum records, 15 Grammy Awards, 31 nominations. Now Howie Weinberg's entire studio Workflow, analog, and digital equipment have been meticulously sampled by Acoustic Audio and made available in this plugin on one screen, where all of the controls are available to you at once. It's very fast to get results with this. It sounds brilliant. And let's take a quick look at the controls. Right here in the center would be the master bypass panel, where you can turn the various stages on and off. E would be for the equalizer, C for the compressor, F for the filter, You've got the analog to digital converter here, digital to analog converter here, and the limiter right here. And you can bypass everything by hitting the red one in the middle. Now the equalizer section is based on the Sontec 432. Got two bands. It's all bell curves. On each band you have a selector that will change the frequencies. So for instance on this band you've got low frequencies to choose from. And you can switch that to mid frequencies if that's what you need. You get plus or 9 dBs of gain. And here is the cue, the bandwidth. As you increase it, it gets narrower, higher cue. And as you decrease it, you can get very wide with it. Next section would be the F section. And that's the filter section down here. Not only does this have high and low pass filters, but it does also have some beautiful shelves. They're centered at 100 cycles for the low shelf and 10 kilohertz for the high shelf. Now those shelves can be turned on and off with these buttons here. If it's lit up, they're on, and if it's not lit up, they're off. So this would be turning on the high shelf, this would be turning on the low shelf. And down here you've got filters, the high pass and the low pass. So if we turn the high pass on, we can select anywhere from 6 to 20 kilohertz. So that's actually a pretty wide range of frequencies that you can cut out. More than you probably use in a master, but it is there for you. Same with a low pass filter up at 30 kilohertz, and you can bring it all the way down. And I should mention that both the shelves and the high and low pass filters are 12 dB per octave slopes. Now the C here will turn on and off the compressor section. Compressor section is based on the SPL iron. There are four different compression modes to choose from, germanium, LED, silicon, and germanium 2. Now the fastest responding compressor out of all of these is the silicon. And just a little bit slower than that would be the germanium, followed by the LED, and germanium 2 would be the slowest responding compressor. So you can go through those different modes and find the thing that you're looking for that best suits the material you're working on. You've got your input trim here, which is the standard Acoustica Audio input trim. It's a gain compensated control, basically can make more or less level going into the plugin, but the output of that plugin is going to be proportionally compensated. So in effect, you're just hitting the internals of the plugin harder or quieter. Now keep in mind that Acoustica calibrates their plugins to work at minus 18 dB. So you don't really need to be hitting it with anything super hot. In fact, I find I get a bit of more of a dynamic response if I keep the levels a little bit lower. Next up would be the L section, which is the limiter section. This is a transparent brick wall limiter that you can oversample up to eight times. And basically as you increase this, you're going to hear things getting louder and louder until it starts to approach that zero dB mark, in which case you'll see some limiting action happening. And I found you can push it pretty loud. It's, this plugin goes loud really well. 
Next to the limiter section, you've got your digital to analog converters. We've got three different converters to choose from. They actually sampled Howie Weinberg's DCS converters and his MITEC converters. And also the third one down here is MITEC plus tape. And that really fattens things up. And conversely, you have the analog to digital converter right here, which can be clipped. You've got three different clipping modes, essentially, when you turn these on. And as you know, that is a uh, mastering technique to clip the converters a little bit. And each of these modes gets increasingly aggressive. So C1 is rather moderate and then more distortion, more aggressive clipping as you go to C2 and C3. Now you can control the level of clipping by pushing into it here with the clip input. And this knob controls the global output for the entire plugin. Now you've got various places where you can control the gain in the chain of the plugin at various points. And one of them would be the pre-insert point here. If you're not getting quite enough volume out of the limiter, you've got it up all the way and you wanted to get more limiting, you can hit over here. I found this pre-insert here. It does a really nice job. There's also an auto gain function. Here you've got a mid-side control. Now I should mention that both the clipper and the limiter have oversampling available. So you can choose one times, four times, or eight times oversampling. And further to that, the plugin also has an HQ mode. So if you wanted maximum quality, you would go eight times, eight times, and HQ. And that would have the plugin operating at its maximum quality. And while we're on the topic of these buttons right here, there is a control link button. What this does is link the left and right channels. So if I make an adjustment on the left channel, you can see over here that the right is following and vice versa. And that's what control link does. If you work in stereo, this is probably the first button you're going to hit. Now the LR and the MS buttons are for the equalizer. LR is for left, right mode. MS is for mid side mode. Phase switch, polarity reverse. The dim button just lowers the whole output of the plugin by 20 decibels. So if you're working and things are loud and you still want to hear it but not that loud, hit dim and it will be 20 decibels quieter. Now there are three buttons down here which change the routing of the different components. You can put the equalizer before the compressor with this button. You can put the limiter before the ADC with this button. And you can put the filter section before the DAC with this button. And generally speaking, and I've only played with this for about a day now, but uh, you get a little more fatness, I found, when I move this around in some circumstances. Generally speaking, the default settings are working great for me, and I look forward to uh, playing around with some of those subtleties later on. So finally, the meters. Up here, you've got a VU meter, and you can calibrate that as well. If you want it to read a little louder, you can move this trim up. And this only affects the level, the response of the meter. It doesn't affect the sound at all. Here you've got both for left and right, you've got a peak meter and also a lifts meter to measure your loudness. You've got a gain reduction meter for the compressor, a stereo phase correlation meter, and gain reduction for the limiter. So those are the controls of the plugin. I know it's a lot, but let's listen to some audio examples. We'll play with the plugin, start getting familiar with it. Uh, for this, let's just choose three. We'll do a rock tune, then an electronic kind of dancier tune, and then a funk song. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get some quality happening here. I'm going to turn eight times on for the limiter and for the clipper. We're also going to hit the HQ. This is going to increase CPU load significantly, but if you've got a good machine, it'll handle it no problem. And of course, you could always increase the latency on your sound card to give your CPU a bit more of a break and get away with more processing. Here we go. a little bit more meter there on the VU. First thing I want to do is hit the control link. So I'm just going to do basic stereo. Let's take out some mids around 350, I think.
shelves, low. Put on the converters and the, and the clipper. Something to keep in mind with this plug-in. Sometimes get little dropouts and uh, little volume bursts. Something to keep in mind. Maybe you want to stop it if you're going to switch stuff around a lot. Let's crank her up. Catching a few peaks there. Let's try to clip it. It's just for pieces here. So here's an example, a couple minutes, you can tweak away and get something pretty decent happening. All the controls are right there, so you're not switching between plug-in, one plug-in to the next plug-in, it's just all right there. It's very handy, very convenient, very intuitive, and I find the results, I, I can get loud really quickly. And now, mind you, this track was on analog already a whole bunch, so it, it already kind of had that advantage of having the transients reduced, so it had a bit of a loudness advantage to begin with, but the digital stuff, I find it, can get it loud no problem with this too. Let's move on to the next example. So this one I've already got tweaked, and uh, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to use the wet-dry mix knob in Reaper, so we won't get those dropouts. And let's hear the raw track, and then I'll flip this over. You could hear what the mastering did to it. Turn it on. Off. So yeah, it's louder. That's kind of the point. Compressors just hitting like a decibel here and there sometimes, same with a limiter. No low end added because there already was a lot. Let's go back a bit. Let's play with the compressors. Dig into it. Silicon, so it's fast, it's a little bit pumpy. Let's go to the next slowest one. Let's ease up that threshold a bit. And the motion is a little bit slower. And then LED. And you may find that you need to adjust the threshold a little bit because the models do have different responses. 
Oh, I like this one. electronic mode here is kind of a half well you'll hear it it's the raw track on here. No EQ. Slight amount of the low shelf. Quite a bit more of the high shelf. Smooth. This time we did opt for the high pass filter. right near the bottom there. Got the tape mode on. Let's try the DCA-S mode. And to avoid that pop, I'm gonna just bypass it. Now let's change it to DCS here. Let's bring it back in. DCS clears the characteristic sound. DCS converters the course used in mastering studios. the my tech a little cleaner on the top end more extended and let's hear my tech plus tape So in that case, the I would go with a DCS or the MyTech Plus tape because that, it was just a little bit of fattening there that I think that the raw track needed. Let's go and move on to a funk example here. Okay, so funk track. Uh, this one doesn't look like it has any EQ on it or filters. Looks like this is all being done with the compressor and the limiter. So let's check it out. I'll bypass it first. Here we go. on. You can see 
see here the compressor's just clamping down a little bit. This example has some more peaks, it's digital, so, so that limit is grabbing it. And then the occasional clipping. Let's play around. Let's go really extreme with the clipping. I'll turn it down a bit. Second most aggressive one. Okay. Let's pick the, the gnarliest one. I mean, obviously, you wouldn't use that on the master, but it's just to give you an idea of the flavor of that clipping. It's a little different from the clippers that I'm used to anyway. It does have that, oh, there's a, a nice juicy kind of break up there. Let's kind of go back to what we had here. I'm curious what this would sound like with a bit of the high shell. Feels like maybe it needs a, too much clipping. High shelf. So there you have it, the Howie Weinberg Mastering Console plugin from Acoustica Audio. I think this one's gonna be big. It sounds amazing. I hope you agree. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure you like and subscribe. Got a lot of cool new videos coming up. Don't miss them. And we'll see you next time on Obsessive Audio.